Hi and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one we're taking a look at how to create an unattended robot and how to set it up inside of a machine. So you can try to do this, for example, if you have a community edition and a spare machine at home or in your office. Before we start, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so I can keep these videos coming to you. So let's get to it. So we're going to start with a quick slideshow. And on the far left, we have a Windows PC. This is the PC that will run the unattended automations. And in my case, I have a virtual machine set up. This could be just a laptop computer sitting on a desk somewhere or any PC you have sitting around that can run Windows. On this PC, we're going to install some software and that's going to be the robot service and the UiPath Assistant. And that is installed in one go, so it's very, very simple. We're going to download the software and then install it. At the other end of our slide, we have the cloud platform. And the cloud platform, of course, is where you manage all things UiPath in a broader sense inside of your organization. This is where you enable different types of services, such as the AI center and things like that. And it's also where you set up the users. And we just want to make sure in the cloud platform today that we have a user that we can use for the execution of our unattended automations. And then, of course, at the center of it all, we have Orchestrator. And Orchestrator is what ties everything together. This is where you manage all of your packages, your processes, your triggers. This is where you manage who gets to execute automations, attended and unattended. You can just do all kinds of stuff in here. And what we're going to deal with today is this user that we have in our cloud platform. We're going to map that user to another user on the Windows PC because I don't have a Windows Active Directory domain. So we are going to map the cloud platform user to a Windows PC user. And that's very simple. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. We're also going to register the machine that will execute the automation. So this is where we will create a link to the Windows PC from within Orchestrator. Also, we'll add our user and our machine to a folder. And to that folder, we'll also add our process. So we have a process that is to be executed on a machine in the context of a certain user. And this is basically what we're going to do in this video. So let's get away from the slideshow. Okay, so we're on my desktop PC. And on my desktop PC, I have a virtual PC running. This is running in VMware Workstation 16 Player. And that's a free product to use if you use it for non-commercial purposes. And inside this, I have a Windows PC installed. I downloaded an ISO file, bought a Windows license and installed it. So for all intents and purposes, this is a Windows PC. This can also run our unattended automation. But in order to do that, we need to download and install some software. So we'll go to the cloud platform. And I should already be signed in. And I will simply click Download Studio over here on the right. So while this is downloading, I'm assuming that you have a cloud platform account already set up and have a tenant configured. If you don't and you would like me to make a video about it, let me know in the comments below and then I can get a video made before too long. Okay, and the download is done. So I can just start the install job and I can close my browser. And it asks me, what do you want to install? Do I want to install UiPath Studio and Studio X and Assistant, or do I just want to install the UiPath Assistant? And I want to just install the UiPath Assistant. I don't need Studio on this machine. I will install it in service mode. I will also set the Assistant to automatically start with Windows. And I'll install some extensions for Edge Chromium and the UiPath JavaScript add-on. And I will click Change. And that will prompt the product to install. And I'll just speed up the video a little bit while that is happening. OK, so the installation has finished. And I'll just click Finish here. And we can see down here at the bottom in our task tray that the UiPath Assistant has been installed and that it is offline. In order to bring it online, there's some things we need to handle in the platform. So let's go to the Cloud Platform. And we can do that from within our virtual PC. So I'll just go to platformuipath.com and I'm still signed in. And I just want to make sure that we have a user that we want to use for the rest of this demo. So if I go to uh, admin down here at the bottom and go to users and groups, I have a user here called Robot Jesperson. And that's a user that I use for many different things. And I'm going to use that uh, account to run the robots in this demo as well. Again, this is not a user that has any kinds of permissions on the virtual PC that I'm running. But as I said in the beginning, we'll do a mapping between this user and then the user on the virtual PC in just a minute. And if we just jump to the virtual PC and 
go into our control panel, go to user accounts. We can see that we only have one account here, and that's called Yebe. And I'm a local admin, and that means I can do whatever I want in here. So the second thing we want to do is we want to go to Orchestrator. So I click Home in my uh, cloud platform and click the demo tenant that I have here, and that brings me into Orchestrator. And as of just about an hour ago, my Orchestrator here was uh, upgraded to the new Apollo design. So uh, if this looks a little bit different from your Orchestrator, don't worry, your Orchestrator will look just like this within too long. And I might still be a little bit lost when navigating this stuff, but uh, we'll see how it goes. This is this is brand new to me as well. So what we have in here is we have still our tenant level up here at the top. And at the tenant level, we want to check what machines we have available. And we don't have any machines registered in this orchestrator yet. We do have some users, but we want to add one more user, and that is the robot yes person user. So I'll click add user. And in the group or username, I'll just type in robot, and that finds my robot yes person user from the cloud platform. What roles do I want to assign to this user? Well, I want to assign him the robot role. We're not going to change anything else. We can go to the attended robot page here, and we will not enable the automatically create an attended robot for this user. We will not enable that. But when we go to the unattended robot page, we will enable the automatically create an unattended robot for this user. And in order to execute an unattended automation on my virtual Windows PC, I need to enter the domain and username of that user that I had on that PC. The PC's name is Homebot, and the user name was Yebe. And I will enter the password. And by doing this, the robot yes person user will be able to launch an unattended automation on my Windows PC, but in the context of this homebot backslash Yebe user. I'll go to the final robot settings uh, page, and at the bottom, I will just say auto download processes and set that to yes. So now I have the robot yes person user in my orchestrator, and that user, as I said before, can run an unattended robot using the homebot backslash Yebe credentials on my Windows PC. I still don't have my Windows PC registered in here, so that's the next thing we want to do. So we click the Add New Machine button, and we'll just add it as a standard machine. Then we'll have to enter the name of the machine, and that will have to be the exact name of the machine. You know, I cannot just say uh, Yebe's uh, virtual PC, because the actual name of the PC is homebot. So that is exactly what it needs to be in here. I can assign licenses to it, and I will assign one unattended runtime license to this machine. And then I'll click Provision. And that's really it as far as Orchestrator goes. Now we have the Homebot machine created. We have a link from the Robot Yes Person user to the Homebot backslash Yebe user. So now we can actually go to our virtual PC. This is what we're on right now. And now we can actually create the connection to the orchestrator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the URL, and then I'm going to copy this part of the URL, because this is the Cloud Platform domain, then this UI path with Yebe, that is the name of my organization, and then demo is the name of this tenant that we're in. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to go into my UI path Assistant. Then in the UI path Assistant, I'm going to select the Preferences, and in the orchestrator settings page, we can paste in the URL that we just copied. And then in this machine key field, we need to paste in a unique key that is generated by orchestrator in order to validate that this machine is who it says it is. So we go back to orchestrator and on the right here, by this machine, we can say copy machine key to clipboard. We'll do that. Open the assistant again, go into the preferences window and paste in the machine key that we just copied from within Orchestrator. And if I now say Connect, we now have our UiPath Assistant on our virtual PC connected to our Orchestrator. So what this means is, if we just close this again, and we can close our Orchestrator and minimize or close the Assistant. It's just minimized. It's still sitting down here in the system tray. What this means is, if I now had an automation, I could run that automation on my virtual PC without any kind of intervention. So if we just quickly move into Studio, I've built a very simple automation in here. 
and it opens Notepad and it types in Hello World, waits for five seconds, and then types in Hi Bob. And just to see what it looks like, this is it. Opens Notepad, types in Hello World, waits five seconds, and then types Hi Bob and kills Notepad. So this is a very, very simple automation. And we'll just publish that to our orchestrator. And if we go to orchestrator, we can now see at the tenant level in the packages page, we can see that we have this unattended demo package that was deployed just a few seconds ago. Now, if we go to the demos folder, we already assigned a user and a machine to this folder. Now we need something to run, and that is a process. So we'll add a process, and that process will be the new package that we just deployed. And we don't need to set anything else, so we'll just click Create. And in order to run this package on a regular basis, we're going to create a trigger. And this trigger will run once every minute, and that's already preset. And we'll give the trigger a name. And we'll select the process, that is the unattended demo process. And we could set it to only run with certain users, or only on certain machines. But we only have one user and one machine that can run this unattended automation in this folder. So we'll just leave that as is and click Add. So now we have set up a trigger. This is going to run once a minute. And if we minimize our orchestrator and studio and look at our virtual machine here in the background, there we go. It already started up. It says Hello World. And then in a second, it should type in Hi Bob and close down Notepad. And if we go to the jobs page here, we can see that it ran this job just a few seconds ago. There's not a lot of room here, but that's how it works. So even if I take this virtual machine here and I sign out of it, and now the machine is just sitting in the background running uh, sort of idle. And this is what a server would do when you run unattended automations on a server. And now what you can see happening is the trigger fired again because another minute passed. And that means that the user will automatically log on run the automation, and once the automation is done running, it'll actually sign out of that user. So the users and the machines and the processes that we have inside of Orchestrator, those are sort of what makes up an execution of an automation. So a user will log on to a given machine inside a folder and run whatever process the trigger dictates. And that's basically how unattended automations work. So I hope you uh, sort of found this interesting and want to set up your own machine to run unattended automations. In the Community Edition, you have the ability to do this. You have a license to do this. So you can run a robot at home and you can do all kinds of uh, little automations on your own little machine. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It really makes a difference. And I hope to see you in the next video. So thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Stay safe. Bye bye.